So what do we mean here? Well, the, the ecosystem that we support is primarily uh, Spotfire and R, and we've uh, made a big investment in R, and we've rewritten R and embedded it inside of our products. Uh, but we also uh, run our R engine on, on Hadoop. Um, we support other engines, such as MATLAB. Uh, we have an Iron Python API that allows us to control uh, lots of aspects of Spotfire um, that we'll demo to you a little bit. Uh, I mentioned D3, uh, LavaStorm, and, and NIME are two partners that have embedded uh, predictive analytics in their workflow uh, applications. So what is this TIPCO runtime for R? Uh, it's the latest uh, script, the statistics uh, scripting engine. Uh, you know, TIPCO owns the S language and the S plus product. Uh, that uh, an, an open source community around that uh, product uh, formed and became hugely successful. Uh, so our response to that was to um, update our uh, S plus product line and, and make it uh, R compatible and come up with this uh, TIPCO runtime R engine that will run uh, R code. Uh, there's a developer edition available for this. Uh, as we rebuilt it, we rebuilt it from scratch at a very low level. Uh, we redesigned memory management and data objects to uh, address some long-standing issues with the with the R language, uh, and that resulted in some significant performance improvements on on uh, and scalability improvements on data set sizes and, and run times. Uh, this is a commercial license that installs free with Spotfire, uh, the analyst and the desktop, uh, and with other TIPCO products, uh, and there's uh, the Spotify server, as we'll see, uh, as you build in your R scripts, manages those for artifacts for, uh, for reuse. Uh, so you can run your R models locally. Uh, when you install Spotify, this runtime R engine installs with it. Uh, and you can just, you'll see examples coming up with Ian and DeGrada just typing in R code into Spotify and have it run uh, on the fly uh, against local uh, data sources or, or server-side data sources that you're uh, bringing into Spotify. We can also leave care on the server, so uh, we can be running Spotfire locally, and then through a data function, we can execute uh, um, R code on the server um, and uh, then bring the results of that you know, back into Spotfire. I mentioned we also do this in parallel on a dupe cluster that's controlled and visualized from Spotfire. And both Spotfire and Tear can load, you know, any data from ODBC, JDBC compliant sources. Uh, there's a set of functions in you know, uh, runtime R engine that um, in one line of code can uh, uh, bring in data from a Spotfire information link. Uh, the, those are, are managed in the Spotfire library. Uh, and, uh, you know, Spotfire obviously can bring data into those from those links as well as they're typically set up from, uh, from Spotfire. So local execution or server-side execution. Uh, and, uh, you know, we support any types of data. So, you know, some of the competitors out there who claim they have an R integration don't do this. They just uh, bring back a single column of data. We support uh, rows, columns, um, different geometries, data tables, lists of objects, anything that R can do, we support through our, uh, through the data function construct that we'll be taking you through uh, today. Uh, and we also allow you to apply metadata uh, to data that Spotfire respects. So you can be doing an analysis in now runtime R engine, and you can apply formatting to those fields so that Spotify will recommend, for, uh, will recognize, for example, geospatial objects or images and display them properly inside a, a Spotify. So you have this uh, capability of, of, of running open source um, R, uh, but you also have the ability to manage the formatting of that and the uh, back and forth so that um, your visual analytics in Spot, Spotify can be uh, very rich. Now, you know, we use this runtime R engine for all types of things, you know, ETL and so on. Uh, but we, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the value that people are interested in is from predictive analytics. So forecasting, summary stats, modeling, segmentation, and so on. Uh, and if you see the performance gains that I mentioned, here's we're fitting 5 million rows in a logistic regression. Here we're scoring 20 million rows. We're somewhere between 10 and 100 times faster in our runtime R engine, the TIPCO engine, versus the open, open source R engine. So what does this uh, uh, runtime R engine do inside Spotfire? You'll see examples today, especially from Jagrata and Ian, where we uh, use uh, the runtime R engine directly in a Spotfire expression, um, where you can run uh, uh, the runtime R engine through a Spotfire data function. Um, we can run it on Hadoop. Uh, it's embedded. You don't have to install it. You know, some of the other folks in this space will require you to go and install open source R somewhere and then jerry-rig this arm's length integration with it um, 
So it's none of that is required. It's just inbuilt. Uh, so Degrada and Ian will take you through the idea of an inline expression where you actually just type R code inside of a, the expression dialog in Spotfire and have a, a graph uh, respond to that, you know, coloring, smoothing, those sort of things. Um, and there's many entry points for doing an expression in Spotfire all over the place. Uh, we'll also talk to you a little bit about expression functions where you can pick off a function uh, that is already there and, and run that, um, or you can extend it. You can write your own uh, extension with R code and have that added into your uh, library of expression functions. We're also going to take you through the process of a data function. So an expression function typically brings back a column of data into the uh, data set that you're analyzing and you keep, you keep going. Uh, data function brings back anything. It can take, bring back lists, data frames, uh, those sort of things. We'll take you through the simple one, two, three process of creating some R code and testing that in R Studio uh, and Spotfire. Uh, we, in, we have an integration with RStudio, so you can uh, use the, uh, the runtime R engine that is part of your Spotfire installation directly in RStudio for development. Uh, and then the second step is then after you have that um, R code running, uh, you can then uh, map the inputs and outputs to your Spotfire data set and run that uh, uh, analytic directly in your Spotfire analysis. So this first step is, is for someone who knows how to use R, but this second step of actually running that data function can be done by anybody who just is a Spotfire user. So you get that leverage from folks who uh, uh, know how to program R to the rest of your entire company who wants to do those sort of analyses as part of their regular uh, Spotfire analysis. It just involves mapping the, the Spotfire column to the inputs of the, of the function, the X variable, the Y variable, and then putting the output um, back into a, a data set that Spotfire can continue to use. And then the end user just points and clicks then to see the re results of these powerful statistical analyses. Uh, we'll, you'll see various ones today, segmentation and so on. So any business user can then just click uh, buttons and then get the results of those, of those powerful um, statistical functions. So really just one, two, three, you know, define the code, map the inputs, and uh, point and click to analyze. Now, once you have these, you can also save these in the library. You'll see some of this, but the, you know, the library can be organized. It comes with a bunch of things in it already, examples, uh, but you can then organize that um, in however you want in your company. And then these folders in the library can be given permissions to different groups. So you can have different um, functions available to different parts of the organization. Uh, there's a bunch of packages that get shipped with, uh, with our runtime R engine. Um, and uh, there's also uh, tools inside of uh, Spotfire to manage those. So inside of this a point and click operation, you can bring in different packages from the R community, uh, manage your packages that you have installed in your tear engine, go get more, um, launch your develop development environment from Spotfire to go uh, work with those packages. Uh, and you can organize your library with uh, the stuff that comes with it, but um, you know, samples, but then adding in folders for, say, geospatial, machine learning applications, and so on, and giving people different uh, access to those. So, you know, we did this uh, for a number of reasons. Well, you know, we have a lot of expertise in the S language, obviously, um, and so we had the engineering uh, capability to do it. Um, but secondly, just the way this community is exploding. So there's more than 6,000 contributed packages out there now. Um, you see the amount of activity on Stack Overflow from R versus SAS, and so this is a, just a very active community. Now, another big community out there right now is Hadoop, um, and uh, lots of activity in that community, and so we combined the thing, the two things, and we built an application where there's a spot by a template. You can point and click an analysis on Hadoop that uh, goes out to the uh, uh, runtime R engine that's installed on the, all the nodes and does the parallel computation using care and brings the results back into Spotfire for point and click uh, drill down. We actually won the, uh, the, the best advanced analytics application award at last year's Strata Big Data Conference for this application. Uh, and tears out there on the nodes of the cluster, Spotfire point and click to get to those and run these sophisticated analyses and then just interact with them in a point and click way in Spotfire. So as we've, uh, as tear has matured, we've now got it running on, on, on the Hadoop cluster, it runs on the TIBCO Cloud Compute Grid inside of the TIBCO event processing products. I mentioned it's embedded in NIME and LavaStorm and RStudio. It runs in Teradata, uh, Stat Services, Spotfire. It's uh, really becoming uh, embedded in a number of different uh, places. 
Uh, and when you combine this with some things like geospatial analysis, we can start to put um, um, advanced analytics on top of maps. And Ian's going to take you through some examples of that. Uh, you can do things like trade areas, like what's the drive time or drive distance around a, an individual store and who lives in that uh, drive time or drive distance and how might you market to them uh, to get them to come into those uh, stores, for example. So the final part of the maturity model, um, Ujwal is going to cover a little bit today, is the event analytics. So after you've figured out a model or the rules in, in Spotfire, you can then publish that out to our event processing um, products like Streambase. And uh, the notion here is that you use Spotfire to understand uh, patterns in the data. And after you build a model or a rule, you put that uh, out there onto our event processing products like Streambase. Uh, and then you can take an action when real-time data comes flowing through this. Uh, you, it picks up a threshold. Uh, as a threshold's violated, somebody can get a notification. Somebody can take an action. You can monitor the results of this uh, and continue to refine your model. So taking your insights from data at rest and applying them to data in motion. And we see a number of examples of this out there that we work on uh, all the time. Um, customer service offers to customers maintaining machinery restocking inventory, optimizing pricing, checking for fraud, rerouting transportation, some of the examples here. And, you know, we do things like uh, trader surveillance. So as we figure out what are the patterns for, you know, front running, trade washing, things like that uh, in Spotfire, then we can monitor those uh, on the real time uh, fast data in motion to re you know, reduce um, the trading violations. So the patterns in Spotfire are, are identified and then published out to our stream-based application for surveillance uh, and some of the simple rules, you know, washing trades, spoofing, those sort of things uh, can, be, can be tracked. Supply chain, so we uh, do a lot of uh, uh, supply chain. We run a lot of um, logistics companies in, in, uh, in, in the U.S. and worldwide uh, looking at, uh, say, uh, product inventory, uh, the fuel use of the logistics carriers, how to optimize contracts, um, and minimize costs. So we do a lot of this kind of shipping. Uh, this is an example, managing the pit to port process and the tidal fluctuations for one of our mining companies. Uh, we run the trains as well, so understanding the timing of, of, uh, of trains and rerouting passengers and so on, um, you know, based on combinations of, uh, of Spotify with our event processing products. Uh, managing industrial equipment, so looking at sensor data coming in from equipment and understanding when what might be a leading indicator for a shutdown uh, and making an intervention to prevent that, can, uh, this reduction in non-productive time of equipment can be, can be really significant. So understanding the, the anomalies in the sensors um, leading up to points of failure, uh, find those leading indicators, uh, understand the optimal thresholds uh, by looking at the historical data uh, back testing the rules and models on the historical data and then publishing those out to our event server for then uh, for monitoring uh, and layering on uh, the live uh, review of that data. Uh, we manage, we have a live data mark that will take data in motion and manage it uh, interactively for us. And we can send alerts out to folks in the field uh, to in, in spot by running on uh, mobile devices to keep track of the notifications and the equipment. Uh, and this applies to a bunch of different industrial equipment, you know, turbines and medical devices, you know, pumps in um, manufacturing facilities, uh, oil and gas companies, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, manufacturing uh, has its own uh, issues around modeling um, yield and defects, and we're able to model those in Spotfire and uh, monitor those uh, in line of the manufacturing process. And one nice thing is we can, any PNG file can be set up in Spotfire as a, as a graph, and we can layer these on top of it, like pie charts and other analytics. Uh, so this is a, a, a representation of a, a refining process, crude oil coming out on the left, gasoline coming out on the right. We're managing that process and understanding the, uh, the downtime of it, and then publishing um, sensor events out to stream base and then trapping for those. Uh, as part of the um, ongoing fast data analysis. So we've done this in the refinery, we've done this in other high-tech manufacturing facilities as well. Uh, and then retail is just understanding a customer's propensity to purchase a product uh, and then uh, scoring those uh, transactions that occur on an on a online website um, shopping experience or inside of an in-store experience uh, and then making an offer to a customer based on their uh, recent transaction. So 
looking at segmentation and propensity models uh, offline in Spotfire, understanding the targets of folks that might respond to a particular offer, uh, evaluating those models on the historical data, uh, and then uh, applying those uh, models, the propensity models, into real-time data so that as a transaction occurs or an item is put into a basket on an online store, uh, that an offer can be generated to a customer. So this really gets to um, taking the raw data, uh, doing the analysis in Spotify to come up with some information, uh, and then do the notification monitoring and so on, but also storing that information into building the company's knowledge uh, for continued analysis and, and evolution uh, to get to a smarter type of uh, operation. You know, at the end of the, the day today, we're going to show you a little bit of our APIs um, about uh, how we can extend Spotify through Iron Python, for example, for uh, doing things like writing data back to databases, toggling Zoom sliders, adding um, markers and buttons to, uh, to Spotify, for example. 